Welcome to all of you, wherever you are, and thank you for joining us at our celebration of Mass. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to get all of our YouTube messages. This is the second week in our message series called Defining Moments. Before Jesus enters into his public ministry, his heavenly Father orchestrates a defining moment so that he will know the love and delight of his heavenly Father. Jesus is in a crowd of people who are baptized. But once he is baptized, he hears the words, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. In this message, we will look at how God works to bring this insight into our lives. As parents and leaders, we can also reproduce this same moment for others. Take a moment to reflect on your relationship with God. Thank him for the key moments he has used to reveal himself and his will to you. You will find messages in a bulletin and a daily reflection will be sent to your email address and our parish Facebook page. If you have not shared your email with our office, please do so. Just a reminder that you can always catch past messages for all of our series on our YouTube channel, Most Holy Trinity Parish, Susquehanna County. If you are away from your faith, thank you for watching. As a church, we are trying to stay connected to you. Know that we miss you and are praying for you. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge of our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our very flesh, 
Grant, we pray, that we may be inwardly transformed through him, whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your rate wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name among the nations. Make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted in his name. You will draw water water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies and the Spirit is truth. So there are the three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are of one accord. 
If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. John saw Jesus approaching him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. We're still in the Christmas season. And Happy New Year has begun this new year of 2021. So we want to welcome everyone to uh, our celebration of the Mass, to sharing in the Word and the Holy Eucharist. If you're watching for the first time, welcome. We hope that this will help you to make a connection with Jesus and also with the Church. But today we're going to continue our series that we started last week on defining moments. And we talked about defining moments as uh, what the psychologists tell us are moments of our life are kind of like a lens through which we view and judge events of our life and even sometimes whole seasons. And so it's going to give us an either a positive or a negative outlook on the events of our lives. So for instance, we mentioned if we have a fond, you know, uh, attitude towards church, it's probably because growing up we went to church and we felt welcomed and affirmed and consoled and we found some real value there being part of the community. If we have more of a negative attitude, it might be uh, because we weren't welcomed or maybe <clears throat> we were simply ignored or even worse, uh, treated in some kind of a rude or unwelcoming way. And so all these um, moments of our lives are going to be very important. Some are going to be more important than others, as we said before. There's, defined, there's decision moments, maybe big decisions, what career I'm going to take or where I'm going to live or a relationship I'll enter into. There are teachable moments where from a teacher, a parent, a coach, we learn some virtues or values that remain with us through life and help us to be the person we are. There are also moments of clarity that help us to understand what we're all about in this present moment of our lives. Uh, but we know there are some moments greater than those because they help us to know that we're part of something greater than ourselves. It's those significant moments when God touches our life so that I know God's presence is here and I begin to understand the plan that God has for me. And of course, this is how it's going to be. God does have plans for us that he wants us to be following his direction to really know uh, everything that's uh, his will for us. So last week, we, I said at the end, you know, maybe we could take some time in the quiet during the week to find two or three significant moments that we could identify, maybe take them to prayer, ask God what was he trying to do, what was his plan, and how could we still know and be part of that plan uh, today. If we find any of those negative moments, we could also take that to prayer to allow the Lord to help us to break the power that those things have over us that are maybe are holding us back from wanting to be part of church or maybe some other thing uh, in the community. So I'm just wondering how many would have identified as a significant moment baptism. It's certainly a significant moment in the life of a Christian when we're baptized and we're, you know, original sin is washed away, we 
become part of the body of Christ, we become part of the Christian community. So a lot of important things happen uh, for us when we are baptized. Today we're celebrating the baptism of the Lord. And so we take a look at the baptism of Jesus, trying to see what was that all about. So Jesus went to John at the Jordan to be baptized, and John was hesitant. He didn't want to do it at first because he made you know, the plea that I should be baptized by you, not the other way around. But for Jesus, this is the beginning of his ministry. This is going to be a sign that he is going to submit to the will of the Father uh, completely in his life, even to the point of dying on the cross, so that he could, through that sacrifice, be the, the salvation of the world, so that anybody who'd believe in him could have e eternal life. And so at his baptism, he saw it as very, very important for him and his relationship with the Father. And we heard the Father respond to what Jesus did in the baptism when God said, this is my well-beloved Son, and with him I'm well pleased. Now there's only one person in the whole Old Testament who is called the beloved Son, and that is Isaac. So he is the one that God, when he came to Abraham and Sarah and promised them his son, Isaac is the son that they received. And we know this story about later on what God asked Abraham to do with Isaac. He said, now take your, uh, your beloved son, your only one, and you're going to take him and you're going to offer him as a sacrifice. Now, of course, we know God did not allow Abraham to sacrifice his son. And he taught the people of Israel that God does not want us to do things like that, offering children in sacrifice. But this was preparing the way for the sacrifice that the Son of God would make for the salvation of the world. And so Jesus understood the plan uh, better than St. John the Baptist. He was really in tune with the Father's will, and he was determined to carry it out. And so he did, step by step. First going and defeating Satan, uh, going through those temptations in the desert, and then plundering uh, Satan's house by bringing souls uh, to faith in him. And so salvation is share in the life of the resurrection of the just. And so we want to imitate Jesus through our baptism and do the same kind of things that, that he did. So we want to make sure we're going to get to know the plan that God has for us. One of the priests I knew uh, who's passed away now some years, a friend of mine, he used to say, you know, some were sent and some just went. So we need to know the plan. We need to know that we are sent by God. <clears throat> so if we are baptized, that means God is sending us as his witnesses into the world. And so we need to get to know the plan that God has for us and also for the world, the salvation of the world. We have a lot of information from the scriptures and from the tradition of the church, the teaching of the church, but we need to get to know what does the Lord want me for me to do with my life in the present moment. So one of the ways we can find that out is by taking some time to go through those steps that we talked about in staying power. So we want to be serving in a ministry. So we're getting closer to the Lord doing that, tithing or sacrificial giving, entering into a small group, you know, a small group where we can get together with other like-minded Catholics or Christians and share the faith. Uh, we want to pray. We're going to be praying as individuals and come together as we do at Mass and at church. And finally, then sharing the faith with those who are outside of the community, especially those who don't have any real connection with Jesus in their lives. And so maybe what we can do during uh, this week is we contemplate and think about the baptism of the Lord and all the things that led him to do for our salvation. We could think about our own baptism too. For If you're like me, you don't remember it. I was too little. I was baptized as a baby, but we can still think through the scriptures of what baptism is all about. And we could be praying, asking the Lord to renew the grace of my baptism in me and in you. So that with that renewal of the coming of the Holy Spirit in that special way that makes us one with the Lord in his mission and the Father's will, little by little, the Lord can reveal to us uh, what he has in mind for us today and each moment of our lives. Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer the Lord our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may introduce others to Christ through virtuous lives, loving deeds, and truthful words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the grace of recognition, that we may quiet our hearts and minds so that we may perceive God's presence and invitations through the words of scripture and our daily experiences. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are yearning for something more in life, that they may draw close to Christ and find fulfillment through relationship with Christ and the Christian community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of human life, that we may recognize God's gift of life in everyone and strive to honor and support that life in each person that we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of prayer in our lives, that we may make time for God each day of this year and be attentive to God's invitations and promptings in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will heal the sick, comfort the grieving, strengthen the healthcare workers, and guide the vaccine distribution and administration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and especially all those on our prayer list that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith and our silent prayers. For most Holy Trinity Parish, that we have a greater unity in the church, and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the poor souls in purgatory for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Lord grant them eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. (laughs) 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness, and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace at our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, have a mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have a mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, today we talked about defining moments in particular. We were calling it falling over other people, meaning doing everything we can to get out to touch the lives of others, maybe to bring them into a relationship with the Lord. But to do that, we need to first know that we are being sent by the Lord, and we need to be in tune with God's plan. So next week, we're going to be talking about hearing God's call, and so that's all going to be about actually hearing God's voice as he's calling us into his service. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.